So as I continue to feed into my obsession with testing mini PCs, the two that really have just stood out to me the most recently have been the 6600H in the SER6 and the 5800H in the SER5 Max. You might have noticed recently that I have been testing these a lot. And it just has to do with the fact that they are giving such similar levels of performance, even though architecturally they are just so different in very interesting ways. We are talking about a six core 12 thread CPU based off of Zen 3 Plus with RDNA 2 as the iGPU, and that is six RDNA cores running at 1900 megahertz in comparison to the ser5 max that is running the 5800h that is eight zen 3 cores so not zen 3 plus not too drastic of a difference in terms of performance though and that is with 16 threads all of that paired together with a radeon 8 which is just based off of the vega architecture so that is eight vega cores running at 2000 megahertz the key thing between these two systems is that the uplift in terms of performance that comes from rdna2 on paper is supposed to be pretty massive we're looking at about a 50 percent improvement the problem here is that the big 6800h had 12 rdna cores while this only has six so we get half of that in comparison to eight being about the maximum that you would get on vega when it came to mobile there were earlier generations that would go all the way up to 12 cores but as we found on the desktop 12 cores is actually not that great to have because of bandwidth limitations so it made more sense to have fewer cores that you can clock higher unfortunately the 6600h also has the problem of having a lower clocked gpu as well where it's not really taking as much of an advantage of the improvements that came with rdna 2. so let's look at how that actually does in terms of performance in a game like spider-man remastered on pc it has been such an interesting title to see because of the fact that it is although a remaster of a playstation 4 game it did come with some very interesting technologies and overall the way that the game performs was very interesting to see it's definitely been patched a lot since it's come out and it does now have support for fsr 2.1 and that is what i was using using it at the performance preset with the lowest in-game graphics setting but i wanted to try out this game to really push both the cpu and gpu because it is a title that pushes both pretty aggressively at the lower end of the market here just to see what the performance would actually be like so i ended up playing it for a lot longer than i expected so while actually playing the games i actually ended up spending the last four hours playing about two hours each on each system pretty much just swinging around and fighting enemies that were around i didn't do any story stuff or anything like that so i can't explain any individual situations like that but at least while swinging around in the overworld and fighting crime and doing things like that the level of performance was decent enough on both systems actually it was pretty all right for the most part the 6600h system did end up for the most part feeling a little bit better and it mostly had to do with the fact that the 5800h sometimes in certain fights with a lot of enemies would start to kind of drop down and i, I think that it is just the fact that the gpu itself is just not as capable i mean it's pushing vega to its limit pretty much while the thing that's holding back the 6600h is the fact that six cores for the igpu is pretty cut down in comparison to what is in the 6800h which that's 12 cores so we're already a half cut down igpu so it's pretty dramatic how much of a cut down that actually ended up being considering the fact that the 5800h is keeping up even though it isn't doing as well it's not doing that far behind in terms of performance and i do think that the tdp configuration is partially to do with it the 6600h seems to be a configured tdp of around 45 watts though it never really hits that number while gaming it only ever hits it when i'm running something like cinebench something that's really stressing the cpu in its entirety so i'm starting to question how much of an improvement we could realistically get if we ended up matching tdps maybe the cpu uplift would actually end up being a lot more significant than i expect it to be perhaps also configuring it to have a little bit higher clock speeds 
though the 6600h on paper does actually have a higher max boost speed at 4.5 gigahertz as opposed to the 4.4 on the 5800h you will see throughout this entire test that the 5800h is capable of reaching higher clock speeds more consistently and while neither is getting even remotely close to its max boost clock the 5800H is consistently hitting that 4.4, while the 6600H pretty much never ends up touching 4.5. So perhaps actually having that extra TDP will allow the CPU to hit those clock speeds. Either way, as it stands with the B-Link SER5 Max versus the SER6 Non-Pro Edition, I can pretty much see why they have effectively discontinued the version with the 6600H. I think it would be awesome if they did a revision of it that actually came with a higher tdp if they could do a version that has a 54 watt tdp that would actually be a very very interesting product but the original configuration seems to be very very limited and partially it does come down to amd's decision to cut down the igpu just this much this dramatically but part of it also has to do with just the configuration in terms of tdp but this does end up making the ser5 max a extremely interesting product because the GPU performance is actually holding up a lot better than I was expecting it to. Now, of course, FSR is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. We are using FSR at the performance preset. We did max out the sharpness here. And honestly, the game itself actually looks pretty decent. Overall, I think that if I really needed to play the game on a system like this, I could get away with it pretty easily and i wouldn't really care too much about how it looks because of fsr it certainly does look significantly better in comparison to fsr 1.0 but overall i was happy with the performance of each system so in general if you've been looking to play this game and you have these systems or you've been considering getting one of these systems it's actually doable and visually speaking i don't think it actually looks that bad it's pretty surprising how much gaming you can get out of these little systems that essentially you'd originally think would be just really good home PCs for office and schoolwork and things like that. But the fact that you could actually play Spider-Man on here, get decent frame rates is pretty surprising. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.